Welcome to the Wilmer Beach Bible Study Wednesday night. Uh, we're going to get started here in a few minutes, but uh, if you're at home, grab your favorite beverage. We happen to have some, it looks like desserts, out of the refrigerator. <laughs> I'm not taking uh, that. I encountered Sister Kathy with some, and uh, I said, well, you get that? She said, the refrigerator. I said, I said, well, the Christian thing to do would be rest, brace up for the rest of the group. Yeah, she can take a hit. So here we are. We're right here we go. So, uh, I know you at home, you can't do that, but maybe you got something out there in your fridge. Um, so, the last uh, two weeks, I've been sharing from life principles to live by, by Pastor Charles Stanley, who's down one to be with the Lord. He passed away. He actually had a book, uh, 30 Different Life Principles. Now, these are his principles. And he was a godly spiritual man, but uh, I don't know that I necessarily word things quite the way he does or did. But that's all right. So if you have some thoughts on this, I'm going to just read this. Uh, you've got some thoughts to say? Feel free, okay? So last week, number 10. If necessary, God will move heaven and earth to show us his will. Oh, I don't if know necessary, that. God will move heaven and earth to show us his will. Well, he wants, we, we in the Lord's something. Prayer, in the Lord's Prayer, we pray for the Lord's will to be done. Yeah. And that's, of course, uh, what should be our desire is to know and understand God's will and then do that. But he says, if necessary, God will. Okay. Now, number 11. God assumes full responsibility for our needs when we obey him. God assumes full responsibility for our needs when we obey him. Now, there's another one I say, well... Um, I understand God certainly, God certainly could do that, meet all of our needs, and yes, we obey Him. But I'm thinking down through history, yeah. there might have been there might have been some Christians in some particular difficult situations. Um, does that always is that always the case? No. Jesus on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Well, that was the talking about the people that crucified him. Here he says, God assumes full responsibility for, for our needs when we obey him. Uh, I quote, I quoted Oswald Smith, who was the pastor of the People's Church of Toronto, Canada. Uh, was a great missionary church. The People's Church of Toronto, Canada. And he said, he never met anybody in a soup line during the Depression that had been a tither before the Depression. That was his testimony. So, Lisa, you're looking to say something. Well, two things. One, to follow that up, if you read Malachi chapter 3, where it talks about the tithes, it even says that he'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Yeah. So, But the other thing I thought of was where it says, um, and you probably, you may know the, um, the reference, it's where he talks about... Um, you know, how by worrying you can't add an inch to your life, and the birds, you know, they That's Matthew six. They don't build barns, but they are fed, and it basically lines out that our basic needs in terms of food and survival. We might not be flying a private jet, but we, will, but as far as our basic needs to survive, will be met. Or if, maybe if, we will. If we, if, or maybe we will. If we seek first we'll his see. kingdom and his we'll righteousness. We're we'll blessed. So, I mean, because the other side is if we say that's not true, well, you know, that, that's not what the Bible says, but it's also like, well, who, you know, David said, of the Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. I mean, you know, can we trust God or not? I mean, is God really there or is he just kind of off in space, kind of like, um, you know, Remote and we, yeah, but, but you missed the that. point. He said, only if you obey him. What if you're not obeying him? Does God answer or does God still take care of you? Well, yeah, still but yeah. the cursings are just all right. Number 12 might be a little, might be a little easier for us to <laughs> all, all assent to. 
<laughs> peace with God is the fruit of one's oneness with God. Peace with God, peace with God is the fruit of one's oneness with God. If we're one with God, we have peace with God. Makes sense. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I don't think so. You don't think so? Because when, you know, when you're in one with God, you have peace. If you're in one with Him, yes, I believe and I'm walking. But if you're, you know what I mean, you're still struggling with sin, you still have that you know what well, I mean? You don't have Paul, that peace. The Apostle Paul was in a dungeon. Yeah. What did he have to say to Philippians about peace? He said, I don't so know. He's not talking about necessarily peace with all the other troubles we got in the world, but peace with God. We're going to have that, that, that peace, okay? Number 13. Listening to God is essential to walking with God. Listening to God is essential to walking with God. John, I agree. Listening to God. You know, most of us in our prayers, we do all the talking. You ever have a friend? <laughs> the phone rings. You pick it up. They're telling you this. They're talking about that. And uh, blah, blah, blah. And, oh, i got to go. And they hang up. Never bother <laughs> to say, uh, <laughs> wait, you doing what you don't do. Is this convenient time? So anything like that. They're just doing all the talking. And then they got to go. <laughs> And I think that's how most of us, uh, when it comes to, but prayer should be a two-way street. And that's why I like it. And I never know, like in that, in the beginning of the service when we have some silence, when we're confessing our sin, how much time should we allow for that? Ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we, need some, we need some silence. Mm -hmm. we need, uh, years ago when we were, uh, we had the live radio broadcast. Silence on the radio. <laughs> you know, the radio <laughs> was, was, was kind of tough. No. All right. Uh, 14. God acts on our behalf. God acts on the behalf of those who wait for him. God acts on behalf of those who wait for him. Now, two Sundays ago, Jesus told him, go back to Jerusalem and wait. Yeah, Remember what we were talking about? Wait for the coming of the Spirit. And I was confessing that Waiting is not one of the things that I excel at. A lot of things I don't excel at, but, you know, uh, God acts on behalf of those who wait for him. Sure. Yeah. David. You have a testimony about that? Well, I'm thinking of David in, in contrast to Saul, but David, remember, he could have killed Saul twice. Mm -hmm. He had people begging him to kill him. But he wouldn't do it because he was not going to... He cut a fringe off of his garment. And the other side... And yeah, daddy, he said, hey, hey, look at this. I could have done you in. All right, but he Where was waiting for God. He didn't want to lay hand on God's anointed. And he was waiting for God to... And remember Saul? Put he, him in that position. He was told... God wait, acts wait. on behalf of those who wait for him. So uh, God's, God's timing is not our timing. Right. And so that's sometimes why we have to wait. Here's the last one, 15 for tonight. Brokenness, and we need to define what brokenness is. Brokenness is God's requirement for maximum usefulness. I agree. Yeah. Brokenness <coughs> is God's requirement for maximum maximum usefulness. Yep. To be used by God, he's saying broken. What, what is, how do you define brokenness? A, what is brokenness? A broken and a contrite heart. What I is will that? not despise. That's what the scripture says, right? What, what is it's that? like you've decided that your will and your way is you're going to relinquish it to, to his way. That's what It's kind of like um, a horse that if people talk, talk about breaking a horse and the horse has to get used to um, bridle and somebody sitting on his back all right and the horse has got a will and you got to break the horse so to speak to get to that point and then you know the horse is okay with that but uh, for us to have a broken and contrite contrite heart is to recognize our own sinfulness right I think of Jacob and so two things one 
Jacob didn't start out broken in a sense. You know, he was he was trying to swindle his brother, and he was a he con was, artist. He was, he was a con artist. Yeah, but he wanted the, he wanted things of God. But when he uh, had his hip dislocated, and and I I heard preaching one time that he was even in tears. I don't know if that's really in the text, but he was desperate and he was not going to give up till God. I won't let you go until you bless me. Right. And then that's when he became Israel. I won't but, let you go until you bless me. Yeah. But he yeah. was, in a sense, broken there because he was, he had to have God. He was dependent and desperate on God. All right. So we'll God. pick up next week with number 16. Number 16. Charles Stanley, now with the Lord. 88 years in this life, and now with the Lord. So, we're in Revelation chapter 17 tonight, and wow. I have to confess right up front, I'm not certain about much of any of this chapter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, it's so comforting. I, it's, uh, Another confusing one. <laughs> <clears throat> it's talking about the fall of religious Babylon, uh, and... There's been allusions to that in chapter 14, verse 8, and also chapter 16, verse 19. But now we're going to be dealing with it uh, more at length here in chapter 17 and chapter 18. And while you're turning to that, uh, where we left off last week in chapter 16 was a number of greats. You remember the number of greats? Um, 14, huh? 16. As you're turning to chapter 17, 14, let me refresh 16, your memory of some of these greats. It follows the passage where it's verse 16 it says, And they gathered the kings together in a place in Hebrew that's called Armageddon. And that's going to be a great battle. Final great battle. Okay, now, some greats are mentioned here in the last part of chapter 16. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air. Out of the temple, meaning there in heaven, a loud voice from the throne saying, It is done. It is done. Then there were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it had ever occurred since man been on the earth. A great earthquake. The great city split into three parts. And we had some discussion last week about the great city. Some suggested it's Jerusalem. Others suggested it's Babylon. Some suggested it's Rome. Um, but because Babylon is kind of mentioned next, it says the great city split into three parts. The cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the Great. So when you look at the punctuations there, the great cities split into three parts, and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the Great. So is that talking about the great city, or is that moving on to talking about Babylon? By the way, Babylon, I saw this, uh, somebody actually counted it. 287 times in the Bible, Babylon is mentioned. The only city mentioned more than Babylon is Jerusalem. Somebody actually counted up how many times Babylon. All right. Okay, it says, Babylon the Great gave up the cup filled with wine of the fury of his wrath. Every, that's the great city, Babylon, and also the great Babylon. Every island fled away, and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, hailstorms, about a hundred pounds each. Okay. Ooh, that was there. Great, great hail. Yes. So if every island fled away and the mountains were not found, the islands were basically probably submerged underwater, and the mountains were. Just with the what do you what, what do you think? Well, if it says fled away, so they disappeared. The great earthquake, you just swallowed it. So yeah, and the mountains too. <clears throat> yeah, everything just went. 
And then there's these great hailstones. Imagine 100 that. pounds each. Can you imagine an ice ball? 100 pounds? What damage it could cause? Mm. Oh. Yeah. It says, and they cursed God on account of the plague of hail because the plague was so terrible. It was a great plague. It was a great, so a number of greats in this passage uh. as we're in the end of the tribulation and uh, God's wrath is being experienced. So now we're getting into this chapter, chapter 17, that I have to tell you, I, I don't have a lot of certainty about any of it. Yes, but we're going we're gonna to discuss it. So, yeah, basically the world is being destroyed. I mean, it's falling apart, right? No, it's just another one of his... Well, these are the worst that, yeah. The worst well, things that are, have well, the happened whole. in the history of Earth. So, right. these are catastrophic. Right. Catastrophic exactly. things. Great things. Mm -hmm. All right, so, uh, the NIV entitles this, The Woman on the Beast... The fall of religion. Do you any of you have any other headings over the great whore and the beast? The great whore. The great prostitute. The great prostitute. The scarlet woman and the scarlet beast. The scarlet woman. Does she have the scarlet letter on her? <laughs> Smarty. What I see it as is false religion, because remember, God, true faith the is the fall in, of religious Babylon. Right. It's like all the false religions in the world. They're fake. Only the true one is Christ. So this is, it's like if you're married, you're the wife, but if you're, you know, or so they're... everybody's going to read two verses, and you're going to announce the verses you're reading. And 15 verses. We're going to go through oh, okay. chapter 17, and then we're going to come back and attempt to discuss um, and come to some kind of, a little bit better understanding, maybe, uh, that's the purpose of our inductive Bible study. I'm going to start with verse 17. One of the seven angels, and the seven angels had the seven bowls, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. Verse 2. With her, the kings of the earth commit adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Verse 3 and 4, Kathy. Verse 3. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast and was covered with blasphemous names, and she had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittered with gold, precious stones, and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand, filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. Verse 5. And upon her forehead a name was written, a mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. And I saw the, no, verse 6, and I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered greatly. 7. The angel said to me, Why are you astonished? I will explain to you that the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides, which has seven heads and ten horns. 8. The beast which you saw once was now is not, will come up out of the abyss and go to his destruction. The inhabitants of the earth, whose names have not been written in the book of life from the creation of the world, will be astonished when they see the beast, because he once was, now is not, and yet will come. Number nine. <clears throat> this calls for a mind that has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the women is seated. Also, they are... They are seven kings of whom five have fallen. One is living, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must remain only a little while. How many are we reading? Two. Two. Okay, you're up. Yeah. Verse 11. Concerning the beast who was and is not, 
he is the eighth and it's of the seven and he's going to destruction 12 the ten horns which you saw are ten kings you have received no kingdom yet but they will receive authority as kings for one hour with the beast 13 these are of one mind and they will give their power and authority to the beast these will make war with the lamb and the lamb will overcome them for he is lord of lords and king of kings and those who are with him are called chosen are called chosen and faithful 15 and the angel said to me the waters where the prostitute is sitting represent masses of people of every nation and language. 16, the scarlet beast and his 10 horns, which represent 10 kings who will reign with him, all hate the prostitute. They will strip her naked and eat her flesh and burn her remains with fire. 17, for God has put it onto their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind and to give their kingdom to the beast until the word, words of God are fulfilled. Um, and the woman who you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. All right, so there's another reference in verse 18 to the great city. Uh, we're here in chapter 16, it talks about the great city being split into three. But the woman here says, saw is the great city and that rules over the kings of the earth. Um, so, <clears throat> the great city. Uh, let's take it at the top. Chapter 17, verse 1 and 2. The verses that I read. So we have the seven angels and they had the seven bowls. Come on in. Come on in. We're just getting sure, going. Right okay? Come on in. Take a free thing on the other one there. Yes, all right. You get your choice of chair if you get early. So we're in Revelation chapter 17. Now look at look at this Bible over here. See, you know, that, that's like this Bible. This indicates somebody's been studying. So uh, maybe you can help us. We're, we're in chapter 17 of Revelation. And I, I confess that as the, as the leader, that I'm not too certain about much of any of this. Uh, but that's what we have an inductive Bible study for. And uh, keep, keep an eye on Anthony. Or he's back here in the corner. We're <laughs> so chapter 17, seven angels. You remember the seven angels had the seven bowls. And they were the... What were the bowls? There was the judgment that God was pouring out here in the end of rope tribulation. Uh, so this angel says, Come and I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute. Or another word for prostitute is harlot or whore, whatever. Okay. Now, obviously, we're talking about some spiritual language here, about something that. Uh, a symbolic language, so this is not necessarily talking about a literal human being that is a prostitute or a whore, but it's talking about someone in a spiritual sense in that way. And uh, we know that many times throughout the Old Testament, uh, when Israel would go whoring, what was that? They would, it was they were going after other gods and idolatry, etc. Okay, sy just, symbolic language. Can I just mention something before we go further? Sure. <clears throat> like we had before with the different, the trumpets and everything. This is an interlude. Okay. So the bowls have been pronounced, but now it's in the side. So now John is, we don't know where this fits in because the bowls pick back up in chapter 19, or 18, I think. So chapter 17 and chapter 18, you're saying it's kind it's of an like, interlude. It's got yeah. kind of like taken aside. So okay. you can't really look at it as sequential yeah. with 16. So definitely uh, in verse 3 to 6 is what John saw. But here we have this great harlot 
religious Babylon is described here in verse 1 and 2. Um, sits on many waters. Does anybody have the end of verse 1 any other wording for many waters? And some see many waters as a reference to not literally bodies of water, but uh, nations or people groups or whatever. But uh, with her, it says, the kings of the earth had committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated by the wine of her adulteries. And again, thought to be uh, spiritual, uh, symbolic language here. Right. Uh, not, not, not literal, yes. Later on in the chapter, it talks about how <clears throat> she was... Uh, drunk on the blood of the saints. Right. So it was kind of the wine, uh, you know, seems like that's would kind of fit there. The wine of her immortality. So that's yeah. sort of the, the introduction to the chapter. So now we're going to, in verse 3 to 6, we're going to, what John saw here in this vision. What John saw. Who? What did John see saw, Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> well, the angel came down and, and took him away into the desert, and he saw the woman, you know, sitting on the scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and seven heads and ten horns. But yet the woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittered with gold and precious stones and pearls. And she had the golden cup in her hand and was filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. So, but purple and gold, well, purple and scarlet represent. They all they've always represent like, like royalty. Yeah, like royalty. Yeah. Yeah. Royalty. Yeah. But they <clears throat> have to make her look that way because she's whatever she is. She's the, the queen of. Sin. She's she's, she's, mean, she's all dressed up yeah. and decked out here, right? Yeah, and, and she's trying to make people her. follow her more, and they look at her in awe. And she's so beautiful, and this, that, and the other thing. And, and that I just need to say that I can't understand how these people keep following when all that craziness is going on, and they're being warned, and all this bad stuff is happening, and they still follow that. Evil. Well, because there's some. Uh, power behind her, a supernatural power that's not positive, uh, evil. Right. The, to, to me, the beast is is satanic. Oh, yeah, but I, and it's then, amazing. So, um, this false, she's not a real wife like the church is, mm -hmm. the, the bride of Christ. The church is the real deal. She's, it's false. It's, so it's a false faith, like, and but it, like you say, it's empowered by demonic power, and so it has a certain attraction. So this is a religious battle. Now, every now and then, some of the commentators, they all associate that with Rome. Uh, and some are more explicit with that than others, and some suggest maybe whatever, but here. Some say Catholic Church. I think that is uh, the devil in disguise. You know, because the devil can turn and look like however he wants to, you know? Well, but you're going to see she's going to get end up, this religious Babylon, this individual is going to get end up judged in the end of this chapter. I, you know, that's, uh, that was when, my when the, when the When the Antichrist, the beast, is kind of done with her. In an alliance with her, using her, but when he's done with her, um, like, like, oh, there's a lot of false religion. There's, you know, there's cults. There's, um, you know, Buddhism, Mohammedism. There's all. There's tons, and like the enemy, Satan, he first tried to throw God out of heaven. Well, that didn't work because whenever you go against God, you fail. But 
one tactic is he's very subtle, so through history he's been providing false religion and always like at Christmas. So this well, great prostitute is false religion. There's, it's there's thought to be false mm -hmm. religion. That's the beast is in alliance with up to a point here. Okay. We left off of verse 5 and uh, 6 of Peter. Right. And upon her forehead was a name was written, a mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of the harlots in the Abomin 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 abominations Thank you. <laughs> of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the witness of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered greatly. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. I wonder greatly, too, because yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> 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 so this is, we're talking about the Babylon the Great is a um, spiritual harlot and the false religion. Matthew. No, I was saying, you know, she's. it's interesting, this last part, and I saw the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the witnesses to Jesus. So here she is, she's just enjoying the fact that she's just consumed these people. Maybe this is when, you know, they're killing all the people off if you're not taking the mark. Uh, we've already went through the mark. So, I, I don't know, but she saw the slaying of all the saints, and she's just intoxicated by the blood of all of this. So that's what I see that as, you know. Um, I do have a book that I read um, years ago called uh, Mystery Babylon the Great, and it traces um, Madonna and child worship through history, um, calling it, you know, false religion. Um, Isis and or Isis, um, different cultures had this Madonna and child uh, worship, which was false. It wasn't, you know, the true worship. Um, Again, it was just false religion. We sold Madonna cards in child in Catholic school for Christmas. I remember that. So you're saying it's a pagan religion. Well, what? Yeah. Which well, it probably is. Judge. Yeah, the Madonna cards. Oh. Yeah, the Madonna cards. We sold them in Catholic school. We're talking about false religion. No, I understand. False religion. It is false religion to, to do and, that. And you can see that there was this uh, opposition to true believers. Right. And to the point that uh, they're involved in the, the death of the true believers, uh, false religion. Pastor? Okay, yeah. Um, and you probably all know this, but, um, in, and I'm not super familiar, I'm sure more a familiar pastor, in Rome there's the catacombs where they have all the documentation of those, mar those saints that were martyred. I mean, they detail, there's a book called Martyr's Mirror, and it details, these were real people. But the, well, the catacombs are basically back in the very early parts of the church. Okay. Martyrs and Merkel Bears is like in the 1500s. Okay. But they have, at least in that book, it details the precise um, tortures they used on these believers. Oh, and of course, they called those believers heretics and, you know. And in the first three centuries, uh, there were many, many, many martyrs uh, until re religion of Rome, of the emperor, became uh, Christianity. And then right. there was many that uh, kind of were swept into it because it was the in thing, the popular thing, the cool thing, the religions. So the uh, persecution of the church uh, was not as severe after that, but uh, it also meant that maybe there was a the persecution kept the church pure. Right. Okay. So, who we left off? Seven and eight. Yep. Um, then the angel said to me, Why are you astonished? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides, which has seven heads and ten horns. So, um, a question. That beast, is the beast Satan? I'm just kind of Seems questioning. Like the beast which you saw once was, now is not and will come out of the abyss and go to his destruction. The inhabitants of the earth whose names have not been written in the book of life, 
from the creation of, of the world will be astonished when they see the beast because he once was and now is not. The, the beast will come. be the Antichrist. The Antichrist. The Antichrist. And we've seen earlier where he comes up out of the abyss, but here it talks about from out of the abyss. But one thing that's noted about this Antichrist, it says he once was, is not now, and will be. So there was that uh, thought about uh, what appeared to be a fatal wound, but uh, uh, wasn't. So uh, uh, just some, we'll talk about that some more. But uh, so this is uh, when I said, when I saw her, I was greatly astonished. The angel said, why are you astonished? Well, I'm pretty astonished in all this, trying to read all of this and understand this. So I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to explain to you. You remember Ricky Ricardo? Explain. I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain the mystery of the woman and the beast that she rides. And the beast, we believe, is to be the Antichrist. Now, seven heads and ten horns. Pastor, sorry to interrupt you. Isn't it there the Antichrist, the beast, and the false prophet? There's the dragon, okay. the beast, and the false prophet. Okay. All right. And the beast yes. is the Antichrist. Antichrist. First. Okay. Okay. Uh, but uh, seven heads, ten horns. Isn't that Rome? I mean, isn't that the, the EU, the mountains and stuff? Well, or we'll talk about that in a minute. But, yeah, uh, it tells you what it is. Seven heads and ten horns. You would normally think seven heads, seven horns. But ten horns on seven heads. Uh, what's that? What's that about? A unicorn. <laughs> A unicorn? That's <laughs> <laughs> one horn, you know. <laughs> so there's more horns than there are heads. That's the point. Well, how about the, um, so the, the middle head have, have the extra horns? Like, uh, right. maybe that, if it has seven heads, then maybe the one in the middle, maybe, or the two in the middle, maybe have the extra horn. I don't know. I think they're countries, and those are other smaller countries that are affiliated with them. Yeah. Well, anyway, who read verse 9? I like verse 9. It says, this calls for a mind of wisdom. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> we need some wisdom here. Okay, this calls for a mind with wisdom. Anybody have another rendering of that? To now oh. understand this. Yes, to understand this. The seven heads are the seven hills on which the woman sits. Now, Rome um, is known as a city that was built on seven hills. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Greek word here for these hills, though, are mountains. Like, but anyway, it, Rome is built on seven seven hills. So this is where the whole thing about Babylon or Rome, um, the seven hills that the woman sits on, the, and the woman, this harlot, the prostitute, is false religion. And where's this false religion seated? Where are there seven hills? And where is there seven hills? Rome. Rome. In history. That's where right. Rome was established. So. If you talk about Europe as a whole, does it have seven mountains? Many more mountains. Many more. Yeah. But so, let's talk so, from here. Seven hills okay. that she's sitting on. So, well, that explains it all, doesn't it? I mean, we think that Rome is known as the, that's where Rome was founded. Okay. Okay. Um, there are also seven kings. And who are these kings? This is what it says about these kings. Who read these verses? I did. <laughs> Five have fallen. One is, uh, the other has not come. And when he does, uh, he must retain a little bit longer. The beast, who once was, now is not, is the eighth king. So you got seven kings, now we have eight kings with the uh, 
with the beast. It also says that and is one of the seven. Say that again. And it says and is one of the seven. And is one of the seven. Seventh is yet to come, and his reign will be brief. He belongs to the seventh, yeah, the and is going to his destruction. So the seventh, but he's the eighth, but he belongs to the seventh. They're related. They're related. That's what my book says. That's what your Bible says. Yeah. Oh, that's a good. That's a good. Oh, the beast good is related to the seventh king. Yeah. So oh. that's a good point. Good point. Oh. Okay. Wow. But as a separate identity. All right. We have. Oh. This well, Antichrist is a human. Yeah, but he's going to be empowered by Satan. So the beast, the Antichrist, is identified as the eighth king. And he's connected with the other seven. Right? Twelve. Who had verse twelve? I did. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom yet. Well, but they will receive authority as kings for one hour with the beast. So and if we exhausted all of our thoughts on the seven, now we're into the ten. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's as clear as mud, but uh, we're now talking about the ten horns. Well, can I say something? Yeah. So the seven, if one of them is Satan, um, then that's more the spiritual part, and then the ten maybe is more the the beast. It says the beast is the eight. Okay. Okay. Because these are the human. All right. Now we're talking the about the horns. Talking about the, the horns. You saw the ten kings have not yet received a kingdom, but who was one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast, and the beast is the Antichrist. So they're going to have a brief period of, of reign or power. That's what I think what a one hour means. It's yeah. a brief period, right? Yeah. Symbolic language, but there's ten. They're going to receive a kingdom, but it's going to, they're going to have a brief reign uh, along with the beast. They have one purpose, and uh, they will be given power and authority uh, to the beast for that period of time. All right? Now, who has verse 14 and 15? Um, I do. All right, so this is a little, this is a little easier to understand. <laughs> These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. For he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Which, it, would this be the Battle of Armageddon? When they so. yes. come against Christ? Right. And, and doesn't he overcome them with the word of his mouth? The sword comes out of his mouth, which is his word, which he could just say like it's over and they're dead or whatever. So, uh, in chapter... 16 verse 19 they gathered the kings together in one place in hebrew called armageddon so i think that's what this is talking about the kings and the beast making war against the lamb and uh who's on the lamb side well and then sorry, it he says, is the lord of the lord king of kings and with him will be his called chosen and faithful followers and see, to me, that that um, those would be those that went in the rapture. They would be, of course, the, the dead saints who rise first, and then those who are alive and remain. They, because um, once they are raptured, then they'll forever be with the Lord. Which will be, we all will be in the rapture one way or the other. We're either going to be have died, and will rise first, or we'll be living. But, well, what's clear is the Lord, the Lamb. It's going to have with him. Right. Okay. Well, Whether they'll be the sealed or those that he brings with him. Um, but there's this war that's taking place. So we're going to watch this war, the saints. We're going to be there for this war, right? He's going to fight it. No, I know about yeah. it. Yeah. So you agree, Pastor? We're going to be there 
for this war. Well, are you one of the called or chosen? I hope I hope. Are you one of the Amen. faithful? Were you one of the faithful? Yeah. Amen. Well then, then we Does might just be perfect? there. We might just be there. If Does it isn't I don't know who's left at this point on earth. So uh but he's when he comes he's bringing with him. Um, and we know there's a lot of, have had died. There are martyrs during the tribulation. There's martyrs down through history. There's those that have been called to be with him. So he's uh, there's this war going on, and this is Armageddon. Mm -hmm. Okay, the final battle. Um, now who left with fifteen? Is that me? Yeah. So um, it says. Then he said to me, and that would be the angel, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Which So there's another reference as in verse 1 about the many waters. Yep. Which Here we have another reference to the many waters. They're like nations. They're group, huge groups of people that, um, you know, if the harlot's sitting there, I don't know, does that imply that they these people were influenced by the harlot and followed the harlot? I don't know. Do you have any other words besides many waters? So or does everybody have the same thing, many waters? So we're trying to understand what the many waters, is that literal bodies of water? Or is that nations, peoples? Uh, 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 and people, multitudes, and nations and languages. That's what it's in the words that you saw. Where the horror seed are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. The angel said to me, the, the waters you saw yeah. where the prostitute sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, right. and languages. That's the many waters. Mm -hmm. Interesting, that's how it's referring to well, the many waters. Many waters being uh, nations, languages, peoples, multitudes. But it makes sense that um, false religion, I mean, it makes sense. People involved in false religion is people. I mean, the whole battle of life is for souls. So, I mean, many, many people. Think of all the people that follow Confucius and all that are in Hinduism. I mean, there's tons and tons of false religion in the world. That I I read that it was because Satan inst he, he couldn't take God down, but he could try to subtly take people down. So false religion is very subtle. A lot of well, times it the works. interesting thing here is this: we're going to talk about the great harlot is being judged. So uh, there was this in, in league with the beast, but now we're going to see that. Uh, uh, He's going to be done with her. That's the way I would say. He's going to be done with her. Um, and uh, that's what's here in the next verses. The beast and the ten horns that you saw will hate the prostitute. So he's going to turn against the prostitute, the harlot, the false religion that he's been in league with. Um... And will bring her to ruin. Leave her naked. They will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. You read the, you read these, right? Yes. Right. Yes. So it looks like he's done with her. He's done. You're done. Yeah. You're only in my way now. Right? So the false religion, the harlot, the prostitute, uh, it is done. Served its purpose. She served her purpose. Whatever. And now they're going to turn. We, we see this. Uh, we see this in history. Yeah, people can be in league with somebody. Next thing you know, they they turn and they're done with them. Right. And this is what's happening here. But all of this is uh, we see God's hand ultimately is behind all this in verse seventeen. Right. Yes. Oh. For God has put it into their hearts to accomplish his purpose by agreeing to give the beast their power 
to rule until God's wrath are fulfilled. Oh, let's just put that a little bit of time on this verse. This, this verse is uh, uh, very insightful. Isn't it amazing he, he, that he, uh, God imputes his will on people? You know what I mean? We say we have free will sometimes, but look, do they have free will at this moment? No, it's already done. That was done chapters ago. <laughs> when it says, for God has put into their hearts, yeah. whose hearts? The, what is it, the beast and the false, the beast and the prostitute? No, not the kings. The kings, the kings yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And the beast. So you, and this whole, whole book of Revelation was written and given to us, it's written down, was given to us, um, to let us know how the end times are going to come about, but the, how all of it is, God had a, a plan. Because he tells us the end from the beginning. God has a plan. And all this is coming about as a result of his plan and his will. So that's why it's a, a book of comfort for us to know that evil eventually is going to be dealt with and done away with. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then there's going to be heaven, and we'll talk about that in the last chapters of, of the book. But you can see how God has put all this, it's, it's on his purpose and his will. When we, I was listening to the news tonight, and I have to limit how much news I watch at one time. But first of all, I was watching the news from Europe. Conflict all over Europe. All over Europe, there's conflict going on right now. It was like one place after another. Uh, in the Balkans, I mean, it's just whatever. There's... Kosovo and the Serbs are rioting again, fighting. They've been fighting for hundreds of years, but they're back. Uh, NATO has been there trying to keep the peace. Of course, we know about the war in, in Ukraine and that. Uh, but all over Europe, there's this uh, conflict. And then so I switched from <laughs> there to the United States. <laughs> and of course, we've got huge problems here at home. Huge problems here at home. And uh, we all know, uh, of course, this uh, crisis with economic crisis uh, that's uh, uh, hopefully coming to a head. Every year. Uh, but, uh, you know, you got people, nobody, nobody's happy with the agreement that uh, McCarthy and Biden and Biden and McCarthy have come up with. Of course nobody's happy. No one ever because, be, yeah. because it, it's involved compromise. Yeah. Nobody gets what they want. Uh, and, and that's the problem with democracy. They do it every year. Everybody, everybody wants something, and what they all want, they want something different. And so the question is whether there's going to be enough in the Congress to actually come up with pass something before we, we run out of money. Uh, although I don't know about you. Know, this is my thought about that. Uh, the federal government's money does not all cease at one time. No. Okay. And no more than uh, a few uh, sometimes... Maybe in the past, you're in between jobs or whatever else, but you still have some money coming to you, or there's some other, you have some welfare coming, but you still have some, but you don't have enough money to pay for all your bills, so what do you do? You pay for the most pressing thing. Okay. But what is that? So we can't even agree upon that. So anyway, this is a big problem in this country. We got our own problems, but big problems in Europe, big problems here. And I say, you know, if we're not living in the last of the last days, uh, we're, it's everything. It's just a mess wherever you're at, and I'm thankful that I'm in the body of Christ. Amen. I'm in the kingdom of God. Amen. And Jesus indeed is the Lord of Amen. Lords and the King of Kings. Yes, He is. Uh, so this is uh, this is what gives me some comfort Absolutely. to know that nothing of this is happening that's not part of God's plan and God's will, even though it looks like it's all chaos and. Everything's out of control and things are getting worse and worse. Guess what? It's going to get worse before it gets better. Better is going to get. Better is going to get. So verse 17 is very clear here that uh, all this is all this is happening because it's God's God's plan. God's plan. All right. Verse 18. Who had verse 17 and 18? One and 18. Right. I had 18. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I only had 
What am I reading? Am I, you want me to read 18? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, 18, and the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. So is the great city defined by that? Yes. You think it's wrong? Um, and the woman is, is the, now I know it's, we're beating up here in the women. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, that's the, it's, in the Bible it sort of looks like they're beating up on the woman here, but uh, the woman here is a harlot. Uh, and for a harlot to be a harlot, there's got to also be whoremongers, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, the great harlot and prostitute is the false religion. And uh, it says here that's the great city, Babylon. So then you get the question, is it literal Babylon or is it Rome, Babylon? And if John is right here in the <laughs> Roman Empire. Uh, maybe there's reasons he's not called Rome, Rome. Maybe there's a reason John's not called Rome, Rome. He was just already exiled. Because he's already exiled. <laughs> and so maybe this is code words. Maybe this is code words uh, for, uh, you know, uh, not the Roman Empire, but this other Rome, the, all that. So this is chapter 17. Uh, we got a little bit more yeah. in chapter 18. Uh, so um, as I started out saying that, a lot, of, a lot of language here that uh, I don't have uh, have it all nailed down, but that's okay. Um, we know that God does. God has it. God has a plan. That's enough for me to know that verse 17, just hang on verse 17. Uh, also, uh, the verse that Lisa read for you, verse uh, 15. So uh, those are some things that you can kind of hang on to me. Any final thoughts before we finish up tonight? Any final thoughts on the fall of religious Babylon? False religion. In this allegiance with the beast, the Antichrist, here at the very end of the tribulation. Leading up to the Battle of Armageddon. The return of Christ victorious reign of rule of return of Christ. It sounds horrible. That earthquake and a hundred pounds of hail coming down. down. Could you oh, imagine those great that? things that are going to happen here in the end of chapter uh, 16. Yeah. You know something? We haven't uh, you know, we ha haven't found where the rapture ever fit in here. So I mean I'm not looking at the rapture as even part of this. You know, because I don't see it fitting in here. So we may endure this. Who knows how far we are from this? Well, you, you were hanging on uh, being part of the Lamb. And uh, the chosen and the faithful followers. Right. Look, there might still be people that are, like, you know what I mean? That all of them haven't died off yet, so they're on his side. I mean... So aren't there those that are still not taking the mark of the beast? So they're still alive on the planet? They're pretty hungry. <clears throat> oh, they got to be hungry. Mm -hmm. I would imagine, you know, they're like you. Pastor Ken. I have tomato plants. I have this. I have you know, that. You ever see these people? Like Jesus said, flee the mountains. Pray that it doesn't yeah. happen in the winter or yeah. you're not pregnant. All that. So those are warm. So, so do you think there'll be saints? Of God, um, you know, still on the planet. We're talking about the last days yeah. of the tribulation. During this period here. And there are those that think they're not going to be here. And there are others that think that we're going to be here. But Vision. this is what's going to happen in the end of the tribulation. That What we can say for certain, this is what's going to happen in the end of the tribulation. I that we can say for certain. I usually plan for the worst and hope for the best. Where does the rapture come from? Does it say so in here? No, if there's a scripture that says something about, you know what I mean, that we will be yeah. caught up, but it doesn't, it doesn't put it in. T we it's haven't not, hit it yet in, Re in in Revelation. It's not in Revelation. It's yeah, yeah. it's another book. It's another book. There's, there's a variety of scriptures. Rapture comes uh, from what I understood was when the the Latin Vulgate is. 
repural or something. It, what it means is quickly caught out. Yeah, right. I know that. So, but, but, and it's talked about. I mean, it's an and, event and, and that and will first happen. First Thessalonians and First Corinthians 15 mm -hmm. is, talks about that being caught up when the Lord returns. So there's the big mm -hmm. question. Right. Big that, question of that. So we don't that, have any. We don't have an agreement on that. Right, because we don't know if that's really the last day, or is that a yeah. day before he comes? Well, well, we don't know the First day. Corinthians 15 it says at the last yeah. trumpet. At the, yeah, you know, say, it does say at so, the last right. trumpet, and the Revelation talks about right, the last but, trumpet. But there's so. also different trumpets. So we're, we're yeah. going we're gonna to go through the rest of Revelation, yeah. then we're going to go back and start again, because hopefully some of this mm. symbolism and symbolic language, yeah. uh, it gets defined as we go through it, so maybe when we make another pass at it, uh, it'll, some things will be a little clearer. There's other things that are, we're talking here, this is... Uh, for 2,000 years, Christians have not had a complete understanding of all this. You can right. read many different commentaries and whatever. But we know how it ends. And that's the thing where we need to put, I think, the focus on. We know how, how it's going to end in chapter 19 and 20, 21 in there. Okay? We're just going to have to stay strong because, you know, we may get tried to the point of death. You know what I mean? You see all these other countries where these people, like well, in Africa... They're constantly getting killed over it. I mean, it's, what's the, uh, the what's some of those persecutions? It's, it's, yeah. happen, it's happening in, in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah Nigeria. Oh, you know, the Boko Haram, what they do yeah. is yeah. they don't like Christians. Yeah. They're going around and they kill those people. Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, we close in prayer. So Jim Fulton made it back from his wonderful adventure over 6,000 miles. He hiked over 300 miles. Wow. Uh, so he's back. Uh, Matthew is getting ready to leave us. And he is. God's going to leave tomorrow, but he's leaving on Monday, so yep. we'll still be here on Sunday. You get prayed over again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, we never get too there. much prayer. <laughs> uh, Mary, Mary, Claire, and Greg made it back late this afternoon, so uh, they'll be back here on Sunday. And a um, couple of things in prayer for um, we know that uh, some of our members last week had surgeries. Uh, I don't know if anybody has heard anything on uh, Jack uh, uh, and uh, was it Deb Clark's? Gordon. Jack Harmon. Gordon. 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 He came yep. to it. He was going home yesterday. Okay. And I got a text yesterday from my friend Steve Wingfield, the evangelist NASCAR chaplain. He's having both knees oh. done tomorrow. Both oh. knees. Both. Oh. Tom is recovering wow. from one knee. Uh, and, and I once heard somebody said they had both hips or both knees, and the doctor wow. said, do both, because if you just do one, you'll never do the other. Yeah. <laughs> so Steve is getting wow. both knees. So pray for uh, wow. pray for, for Steve, but pray for his surgeon. And... Uh, uh, so I said it was from all that football, wasn't it? Oh, wow. Yeah, he said, I never regret so. It was from all those football games. Um, I also ask you to pray for our friends, that uh, wonderful Christian friends, and their 24-year-old son took his life. Oh. And uh, he was in the Army. We lose like, something like 22 people a day who been in the service, who take their lives. That's more than we lose in actual combat. But this young man had, he gave them a lot of grief, and then he took his life. But uh, he had every advantage going for him, and it's just a very sad thing. I just, uh, I got this message on Saturday morning, and I just, it just, uh, I just ate for this, this family. Sake for this family. Do we know them? Uh, some of you might remember the jokes. It was Matthew. It was their son Matthew. Some of you from Grace might remember them. So uh, let's commit these people to prayer. Anybody have any prayer requests from this group? Yes, Beatrice. My mountain. <laughs> uh, whoa. Yep. Well, Same cast thing. It into, well, cast it into the lake. I it's know. <laughs> I'm going to take it to the ocean. Father God, uh, as we study this passage, we are comforted by the fact that indeed the Lamb, Jesus Christ, is going to return. He's going to return in victory and power. And uh, even in 
a raid against the, these adversaries of the beast and uh, those in league with him, uh, he's going to be victorious. So we're, we're comforted by that. And to know that it's all part of your plan, we're all part of your will. Um, we look forward to, yes, being with the Lord for all of eternity in a place called heaven. And to know that uh, evil is going to be done away with and that's our ultimate future. So we're comforted by that. We, we pray for these who have had surgery, for others who are looking at surgery tomorrow uh, for uh, recovery and for uh, your blessing. For those who uh, are a number that have been traveling, some back, some leaving, uh, we ask your uh, blessing upon them and safety. And uh, we ask your blessing upon us as we gather and worship on Sunday, uh, along with Christians around the world. Uh, in these trying times that we live in. We definitely live in trying times. We pray as we come together we might be encouraged by one another and by your word and by the spirit that you've given us. This, this Sunday was Pentecost Sunday. We are thankful for your spirit that you have given us and may we have uh, indeed the peace and the joy and the fullness of your spirit. God, we just thank you so much that we can join together and study your word, and we appreciate the freedom to do that. We pray for those in the world now that Christians that are being persecuted, and um, we pray for them that they would be strengthened and helped. Um, Father, we just pray for this uh, Christian family that lost their son. Uh, we pray comfort to them. Um, just give them the guidance they need to, um, from the Word to know how to um, accept what, what, what took place. Um, we just lift them to you. Uh, we pray for all our families in our church and children, marriages. We pray for all our families. God, we just pray your blessing on each one. Um, we pray for our leaders. Tell us to pray for our leaders. Father, we just we love you and praise you. And we're just so grateful to know you. Please use us to be a light to those that are lost and don't know you and don't know how to find you. Work through us to uh, point them to you um, so they too can have that joy and that um, forgiveness and that peace that comes from knowing you. We just pray in Jesus' name. So help us to get a good night of rest the rest of uh, this evening and tonight, tomorrow, and gather us again on Sunday uh, as we gather together and worship uh, well as Christians around the world. And uh, give us your peace, but help us also with your spirit to be your witnesses, uh, offering uh, love and hope uh, to a world that very much needs it. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mary Jane, introduce us to your friend here. <laughs>